Hey guys, what's going on? So in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you something really cool. So what you're seeing here actually is you're seeing me remote into a different MacBook computer altogether. So this is my regular MacBook here and back here is actually my MacBook Pro. And what you'll notice here is that I've got on my MacBook, just to prove to you that this is a different computer altogether, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the IP address. So once I go and do this, you'll see that my private IP address is 192.168.1.222 and when I do this on my existing computer on my MacBook computer I'm going to run the same command here and you'll see that this computer here has an entirely different IP address so this one is my MacBook Pro like I said 192.168.1.229 my MacBook is 222 so what you're going to see so I'm just going to close this down this is my Jupyter instance here so I'll leave that open what I want to do is I want to be able to take this Excel spreadsheet that is sitting on my MacBook and use open this up to a network level API. So we're not gonna open this up to the public, but just on our actual local access network, we're gonna open this up using an API. And if you think about the use cases, you know, picture a time when an Excel file is absolutely massive, like we're talking, you know, hundreds and hundreds of megabytes. And transferring that stuff over, sometimes using a USB stick or, you know, even using other methods whether it's emailing it or your file transferring it using a messenger app or sometimes something sometimes it craps out because some of these tools have a limit of you know 10 10 megs maybe 50 megs or 100 megs but i've encountered excel files that are almost millions and millions of rows of data which can add up easily to almost you know 100 to 200 gigabytes this is actually an example so this is data that i took off of kaggle um, it's golfing data and what this data tells you is it tells you the player name, it tells you the date, uh, the statistic we're looking at, the variables, in this case we're looking at rounds, uh, and then it gives you a value after that. I truncated this data to 4,000 rows. If you go on Kaggle, the original data set is about a million rows and this was about 120 gigs. And even opening this up on my MacBook took probably anywhere between 55 to 60 seconds or so. We'll open this on my MacBook Pro is obviously a little bit faster, but that's just opening it up. Can you imagine doing any kind of manipulation with this kind of information? And so the question is, how do you take something like this? How do you expose it to an API and then access it on an entirely different computer using, using Python? So this data is sitting on my MacBook and we already saw that the IP address for this was 192.168.222. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and access this Excel spreadsheet using that IP address. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So let's get into it. The best part about this is it's only a couple of lines. So I actually walked you through something called Excel Wings a while ago. And if you don't remember Excel Wings, I'm going to post it up above and also link it in the description below. And in that video, what I showed you was how to go ahead and build your own custom function within Excel. But Excel Wings actually has a couple of other features with the REST API being another one of them that I actually really like using a lot. So I'm going to just go ahead and import these in here. Um, some of these you should already know what they are. Just, you know, being on this channel, you'll notice that I've used pandas and requests and, and JSON and all that stuff several times. So these are the only libraries you need. The one you may be wondering about is this one. So this is just pip install Excel Wings. And then you want to open up the REST API package and import the API module. And then pandas is just to, you know, make a data frame and then requests and JSON are to manipulate the data. Request is to get the URL and then JSON is to manipulate it into the JSON format. And really it's only a couple of lines. So, you know, one of the things I told you was that the URL that we're gonna be accessing this from is http forward slash 192.168.1.222, I believe is what it was and it was and we're gonna expose it to port 5000, but let's just verify that was the right address. I can't remember. So I'm using screen share on Mac, which is really cool. So yeah, so 222, that's the address. And then what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and expose the endpoint. And I'll tell you exactly how this works in a second. The docs on Excel wings are actually pretty good. I like them quite a bit. Uh, when we look at book, so book is a standard uh, endpoint. So they have multiple endpoints there. So if I were to just show you something like endpoint equal to books and I do something like r is equal to requests, request.get, then I'm going to say my base URL, base underscore URL plus endpoint. 
what this is going to do is this is going to expose any books that are currently open in Microsoft Excel. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and type in r.json and we'll do something like this. It's going to say r is not defined. Okay, so let's do that. So it's actually going to say r is not defined. And the reason is, is because we actually haven't started the server on our host machine. So not only do you have to have this Excel file open, but you also need to expose the API. And to start the API, it's simply typing in Excel Wings REST API run, and we're gonna run it on host 0000 because I wanna expose it to my local network and then open it on port 5000. So let's go ahead and do this. So it's gonna say, okay, debug mode is off. It's running now, so we're good. So let's go back to this and let's rerun all of this stuff here. I wanted to show you that on purpose to show you what happens. All right, and now when I run this, so it's going to tell me some information about my actual book. So let's go back to my Mac for a sec. And it's going to tell me the location of where it is stored. It's going to tell me the app number. It's not really relevant right now. The name. Now, here's what I did to this application is what I did is I took all this data here and I went all the way down and I copied it and highlighted everything. So I'll just show you I do shift command down. Once you do that, I actually call this data set my data. It just makes it so much easier when you do that, when you're actually using this. Otherwise I have to put in all the different addresses and it's just a pain to do. So I just went ahead and highlighted all the data that I care about and I went over here and I changed the name to my data. And so what it's doing here is it's saying the names of the data sets that I have is I have my data. If I created another data set here, it would show me in a list format with that as, as well. And that just makes calling this information so much more easier. And it tells you that, um, you know, your sheet name is data, which is exactly what it is. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to change the endpoint slightly. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to say forward slash book. Then we're going to say, this is called, remember the Excel, the CSV files called data.csv. Then I'm going to go forward. I'm going to type in names. And this is just a standard thing you would type. And then you would type in my data and then pick the range for my data. And so what this is going to essentially tell me to do now is it's going to say, Go ahead and open this book called data.csv, data, data2.csv, so let's add in the two there. Um, then it's gonna say, um, now out of all of this, which data sheet do you want? Which basically data set do you want? So we do forward slash names, we pick my data, and we, we're telling it to give me the entire range for it. And so when I do this, and I change this around, watch what happens here. So this is going to take a couple of seconds to run because it's going through around 4,000 rows of data or so. Remember, this CSV file is not on this computer. This is sitting on an entirely different computer altogether. And so a whole bunch of information comes down here, which is all the JSON data from this CSV file. Now, I actually want to go ahead and I want to do something like change this into a data frame. Not very hard to do at all. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So one of the things when you scroll up, you're going to see that the data for the data set really starts in um, key number or key called formula. So formula, if you do formula zero, it has all your column names, formula one, and moving forward basically has all of your different information uh, that you want to basically store in a data frame, which is essentially all of this stuff over here. So to do this, it's actually very straightforward. What you're going to do is you're going to change this and you're going to say DF is equal to PD dot data frame and remember this is a data instance from there I'm going to be pulling formula which is what I'm concerned about because that's where it's sitting and the data sitting in this thing called formula over here and I want to pull everything from one to everything else so basically in this list pull all of this stuff that's I want I want all of this stuff and then for my columns I'm going to go ahead and say columns is equal to data formula zero Let's give this a shot. Hopefully I didn't error anything, though I almost feels like I did for some reason. I don't know why. And I did because I believe my error is, and I'm missing one right there. So this happens sometimes when you just code like this. Now we're going to see if we can actually replicate that Excel spreadsheet. And it looks like we did. So when I go ahead and I pull this information out, let's go to the first record here. You're going to see it says Kyle Westman, Kyle West. Westmoreland, sorry. The date we can go and fix, that's not a problem. We can we can put it into this format. Uh, statistic, variable, value. So it looks like we were able to pull everything in there, which is great. All right, so now what we wanna do is we just wanna take care of this date here and we wanna convert it back. So I'm just gonna give you this small little command. I'm gonna copy and paste it. Something I wrote uh, a while ago, um, essentially what it's doing here 
is first of all, I'm taking the date uh, column that's coming back. So this is actually returning a text right now. I'm converting it back into an integer. And then because these dates are actually serialized dates in Excel, and what that means is that from uh, January 1st, 1900, this represents 43,744 days for us to get to October 6th, 2019. And so what this is doing is it's saying, take this, add it back onto this date and return it back in this format. And so I'm gonna run this. And then when I run my data frame against it, you see that it actually converts back into date and that's what we want. So guys, very quick way to go ahead and start uh, getting really crafty with some of your API skills and, and Python. And again, you can even run this as a script. So if you, you know, if somebody on your network has this Excel file and they say, hey, listen, I want a copy of it, no problem. Remember, you can just do df thought to underscore X CSV or underscore Excel and you can type in wherever you want to store it here and you can basically replicate that exact file on your hard drive somewhere doing something like this, no matter how big the file is. So the file could be, you know, a gigabyte. It may take a while for it to run, but at the end of the day, you're going to have a copy of the file. If you just want to get quick access to the data to do some manipulation and you know you can even just go ahead and store a smaller sample of this on your own hard drive you can do that as well so guys what we walk through today is a really cool way to take an excel file that is sitting on an entirely different computer not having to copy it over to your computer or anything like that but just exposing it through an api and then going on your other computer and finding that file through the actual address range or the url in this case and then going ahead and copying that file or opening that file on your local instance. Again, really good if you don't want to copy this file over, if you want to get a file from somewhere else or it's sitting on another computer at work and you know you don't have the ability to transfer files, this is a great way to do it. So what you've learned today is how to use Excel, how to use APIs and how to do something really, really cool. So that's all for today, guys. And if you found this content helpful, please consider liking and subscribing and I will see you next time. Thank you.